Today's topic. So yesterday we were discussing about polysaccharides, right? Now you know polysaccharides, they are polymers of monosaccharides. And we classified polysaccharides yesterday into two types: homopolysaccharides and heteropolysaccharides. Homopolysaccharides were those polysaccharides which are formed of similar type of monosaccharides. They included starch, glycogen, cellulose, and chitin. Well, as heteropolysaccharides were those polysaccharides which were formed of different types of monosaccharides. So that their basic unit was not similar. They were differing in their basic units. So different, these uh, heteropolysaccharides include chondroitin sulfate, hyaluronic acid, keratin sulfate. We call them together as mucopolysaccharides, right? So this was the first classification of polysaccharides. Now we further classify polysaccharides into two more types. We further classify polysaccharides into two more types. Polysaccharides are further classified into two more types. One type is known as food storage polysaccharides. Food Storage polysaccharides. Food storage polysaccharides. Another type of polysaccharides is known as structural polysaccharides. Structural polysaccharides. So, what are food storage polysaccharides? These are the polysaccharides which serve as stored food. In animals and plants. The food storage polysaccharides are those polysaccharides which serve as stored food in plants and animals. They include starch and glycogen. They include starch and glycogen. Starch is known as stored carbohydrate of plants. So, starch is stored carbohydrate. Of plants. Well, as glycogen, which is known as animal starch. Glycogen is also known as animal starch. Why it is known as animal starch? Because it is stored carbohydrate. It is stored carbohydrate of animals. You know, glycogen in animals is stored in liver. Skeletal muscles, right? So, food storage polysaccharides are those polysaccharides which serve as a reserve food in plants and animals. In plants, starch serves as reserve food. So, we call starch as stored carbohydrate of plants. So, when plants store their carbohydrates, they store them in the form of starch, right? And glycogen is stored carbohydrate of animals. So when animals store their carbohydrates, they store them in the form of glycogen. That is why we call glycogen as animal starch. This glycogen, it is stored in liver and skeletal muscles. Then we have got some structural polysaccharides. Structural polysaccharides are those polysaccharides which are involved in formation of some structures in plants and animals. For example, there is cellulose. You know cellulose, it is the main constituent, it is the main component of the cell wall of plants. It is used for formation of cell walls. So cellulose is involved in formation of cell wall of plants. So we call it as structural polysaccharide because it forms the cell structure. That is why we call it as structural polysaccharide. Similarly, there is chitin. Chitin is involved in formation of exoskeleton of arthropods. Chitin is the main constituent of cell wall of some fungi, right, and some algae. So chitin again becomes a structural polysaccharide. So it is found in cell wall of, it is found in exoskeleton. Exoskeleton of arthropods. It is found in some cell walls of fungi and algae and some algae. So chitin 
is involved in formation of exoskeleton of arthropods. It is involved in formation of cell walls of some fungi. And it is also involved in formation of cell walls in some algae. That is why we call chitin also as a structural polysaccharide. Right? Similarly, yes, there are mucopolysaccharides. Mucopolysaccharides, as I told you yesterday. Mucopolysaccharides, they are found in waste connective tissues of our body. Right? So they are involved in formation of connective tissue. They are found in our connective tissue. So they form connective tissue. So for that purpose, they are also categorized as structural polysaccharides, right? So for that reason, we also categorize them as structural polysaccharides. So now we classify polysaccharides into two types. Food storage polysaccharides. These are the polysaccharides which are found in plants and animals in the form of reserve food. They include starch and glycogen. Starch is the stored carbohydrate of plants and glycogen is the stored carbohydrate of animals. Then we have our structural polysaccharides. These structural polysaccharides are those polysaccharides which are involved in formation of some body structures. For example, cellulose, in case of plants, it is involved in formation of cell walls. Chitin, it is involved in formation of exoskeleton of orthopods. It is involved in formation of cell wall of fungi and some algae. Similarly, mucopolysaccharides, they are found in various connective tissues of our body. For example, mucopolysaccharide chondrite and zika sulfate. That is found in our cartilages, right? Similarly, hyaluronic acid that is found in our sinu sorry, yes, hyaluronic acid that is found in our connective tissues, right? So they are also involved in the formation of body structure. That is why we call, classify them as structural polysaccharides, right? Now we are going to discuss them in detail. So first of all, we will start with the starch. We will see of what material the starch is formed of. So we'll start with the starch. We will have a look at the starch. Now, what is starch? Come on, tell me. Now, what is starch? Starch is stored carbohydrate of plants. And what is glycogen? Glycogen is also known as animal starch. Why we call it as animal starch? Because it is a stored carbohydrate of animals. Okay. Now we will have a look at the starch first. Starch, they are synthesized by, they are prepared by plants during the process of photosynthesis, right? So first, in the process of photosynthesis, glucose is formed. Then that glucose is converted into starch, right? So where we find starches? So our some food items like wheat, rice, banana, potato, they are rich in starch, right? So we will have a look at the chemical nature of starch, chemical composition of starch. <coughs> a starch molecule is formed of two components. A starch molecule is formed of two components, amylose and amylopectin. A starch molecule is formed of two components, amylose and amylopectin. So first we will have a look at amylose. What is this amylose? This amylose, it is a long, it is a long, Unbranched, unbranched, helical chain of, helical chain of some 200 to 2000 glucose residues, glucose residues, linked by, linked by alpha, one four glycosidic glycosidic linkage. So amylose, it is a long unbranched helical chain of some two hundred to two thousand glucose residues. 
linked by alpha 1 for glycosidic linkage. So that means it is formed of glucose units. And many glucose units combine together we, in the form of a chain. We call them as glucose residues. So do you understand now what is a glucose residue? When many glucose units are linked together in the form of a chain, then we call them as glucose residues, right? So this amylose, it is a long unbranched helical chain. That means it is coiled. It is a long unbranched helical chain of 200 to 2000 glucose residues. So some 200 to 2000 glucose residues, they get linked to each other, right? And they are linked to each other by alpha 1 for glycosidic linkage, right? So I will show you this in the diagram how glucose units, how glucose residues get linked and how they form the long chain, right? So should I, for that purpose, I have to rub this. So I will show you how glucose units they get linked together and how they form a long chain, and then how this long chain becomes. Helical, how this long chain gets spoiled. So, this is one glucose unit. This is alpha glucose. I hope you know the difference between alpha glucose and beta glucose. I have told you. Do you remember? This is one glucose residue. This is one alpha glucose. Right? It gets joined with another glucose. It gets linked. Right. So these are two glucose. Beta glucose and alpha glucose. Right. So how do they combine? They combine by the elimination of a water molecule. A water molecule is eliminated here. A molecule of water is removed. Right. So which type of bond is formed between them? This glucose and this glucose, they will be linked together by elimination of water molecule. Hello, don't make noise. Which type of bond will be formed here? Which bond will be formed here? One glucose unit joins with another glucose unit. A bond is formed by elimination of water molecule. Which bond is formed here? So a glycosidic bond is formed. Which type of bond is formed? Glycosidic bond is formed here. Glycosidic bond is formed here. Glycosidic bond is formed here. So a glycosidic bond is formed. The bond is formed between I will tell you, this is carbon first, this is carbon second, this is carbon third, this is carbon four, carbon five, carbon six. Similarly here, carbon first, carbon second, carbon third, carbon four, carbon five, and carbon six. So bond is formed between carbon first and carbon four. Bond is formed between carbon first and carbon four. So we call this linkage alpha. Why alpha? Because both the glucose units are alpha glucose, right? So that is why we write it as alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage because the bond formed is glycosidic bond. The bond formed between them is a glycosidic bond. So this is one glyco alpha glucose molecule, this is another alpha glucose molecule, right? They get joined to each other, they get linked to each other by the formation of a glycosidic bond. In the formation of this glycosidic bond, a water molecule is eliminated. And the bond is formed between carbon first and carbon four because both the sugars are alpha sugars. That is that is why we write it as alpha one four glycosidic linkage. Right. Similarly, another glucose molecule joins to it. Similarly, another glucose molecule will join to it. This is another glucose molecule. It joins to it. Right. So many glucose molecules join again bond will be formed between carbon first and carbon four. This carbon four. 
one more water molecule will be eliminated. One more water molecule will be eliminated. One more alpha glycosidic linkage will be formed, right? So in this way, one, two, three, four, and many sugars they combine. How many sugars combine? Some two hundred to two thousand glucose residues. Now they are known as glucose residues. Some 200 to 2000 glucose residues combine in this way and they form a long polysaccharide chain, right? Now, this long polysaccharide chain it becomes helically, helically coiled. This, this rounded circle it represents a glucose residue. This is another glucose residue, another glucose residue. These glucose residues they get linked. They get linked together and they form a helical chain. They form a helical chain. This helical chain of 200 to 2000 glucose residues. You can see the chain is unbranched, but it is coiled, it is spirally coiled. So this becomes our amylose. Right. Now understand how amylose is formed. So 200 to 2000 glucose residues, they get linked to each other, they get joined to each other. So one glucose residues joins with another glucose residue, it joins with another, it joins with another. So how they join? They join to each other by the formation of alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage. In the formation of this linkage, the water molecule is eliminated. And a glycosidic bond is formed between carbon first and carbon four. That is why we write it as alpha one four glycosidic linkage. So 200 to 2000 glucose units, glucose residues get linked. Then this chain becomes spirally coiled around an imaginary axis. So this chain becomes helical. And this helical unbranched chain of 200 to 2000 glucose residues is known as amylose, right? So this is how amylose is formed. Now you know about the structure of amylose. Now what is amylose? Okay, tell me now what is amylose? Now what is amylose? It is a long, unbranched helical chain of 200 to 2000 glucose residues. And the glucose residues are linked by alpha 1 for glycosidic linkage, right? So in, so in this way, amylose is formed. Now, this is one component of starch. Now, starch has got another component. That is the amylopectin. Now, we will have a look at the amylopectin. How this amylopectin is formed? What is the structure of this amylopectin? See what is amylopectin. This amylopectin, it is another, is again a long branched chain, branched chain of some. 2000 to 2 lakh glucose units. 2 lakh glucose units. Or glucose residues. It is appropriate to say glucose residues. Glucose residues. Amylopectin is a long branched chain of some 2000 to 2 lakh glucose residues. So there are two lakh glucose residues in it, right? Branching after they branch after branching after every twenty to thirty glucose residues. Hello, don't make noise. Yes. 22 24 glucose residues. 
So amylopectin, it is again formula of glucose residue. It contains some 2000 to 2 lakh glucose residue. So it is much longer, it is much larger than the amylopectin. Amylo, right? Amylo. Here the glucose residue, they are linked to each other. They are again linked to each other here by alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage. They are also linked to each other by alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage. But this amylopectin it shows branching. It shows it develops a branch after every 20 to 30 glucose residue. So first one glucose residue, there is one glucose residue, second glucose, third, fourth, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 21, 22. Listen to me. So, glucose residues, they first join in the form of a linear chain. After every 20 to 30 glucose residues, a branch develops. This is the branch. And this branch also contains some 20 to 24 glucose residues in it. Do you understand what I am saying? Yes, sir. These are the glucose residues. So first, glucose residues, they join. As 20 to 30 glucose residues join together, then they develop a branch, right? Here in this branch, there are again some 20 to 24 glucose residues, right? These glucose residues, which are in the form of this linear polypeptide, linear polysaccharide chain, they are linked by alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage. These glucose residues, which are in the chain, which are in the branch, they are also linked by alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage. Do you understand what I am saying? So, first one glucose residue joins with another glucose. When 20 to 30 glucose residues join, right, then they develop a branch. When this branch develops, in this branch, there may be some 20 to 24 glucose residues. The glucose residues which are present in the linear polysaccharide chain, they are linked by alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage, as I showed you earlier, right? Then, when the branch arises, the glucose residues present in this branch, they are also linked by alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage. But the point where branch develops, but the point where branch arises, at this point, there is alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkage. At the point of branch, the point where branch develops, there develops a, another linkage, alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkage. Do you follow me what I am saying? In amylopectin, there are 2002 lab glucose units. First, the glucose units they, do, they join in the form of a linear polysaccharide chain, right? Then, after 20 to 30 glucose residues, a branch develops. When we will move add further by 20 to 30 glucose residues, another branch will develop. Right? So, this amylopectin, it is not unbranched, it is branched. It branches after every 20 to 30 glucose residues. 20 to 30 glucose residues, one branch. 20 to 30 glucose residues, another branch. 20 to 30 glucose residues, another branch. Right? So, how many glucose residues are then present in a single branch? In a single branch, there are 20 to 24 glucose residues. How these glucose residues are linked, which are present in the linear poly? This uh, polysaccharide chain. How, how these glucose residues are linked to each other? They are linked to each other by alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage. How the glucose residues which are present in the branch, how they are linked to each other? They are also linked to each other by alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage. But at the point where branch arises, at the point where branching occurs, at this point there is another type of linkage. This linkage is known as alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkage, right? How this linkage is formed, I have shown you how alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage develops. Just before I showed you how alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage is formed. Now I will show you how alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkage will be formed at the branch point, right? Did you understand this much? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I will show you how alpha Glycosidic linkage will be 
Don't sing songs. No, don't sing songs. These are glucose residues linked by alpha one four glycosidic linkage. Alpha one four glycosidic linkage. Now you know here we have got CH two. OH. I will show the full. Right? This is one glucose. This is carbon first, carbon second, carbon third, carbon four, carbon five, and carbon six. Right? So when the branch occurs, another glucose residue at the branch point joins to it like this. <laughs> this is one more glucose residue, right? So when a branch, when a branch develops. A water molecule is eliminated here. This water molecule will be eliminated here. This is carbon six and this is carbon first, carbon second, carbon third, carbon four, carbon five, and carbon six. So bond is formed between carbon first and carbon six at the branch point. This is carbon first. This is carbon six. Bond. Bond is formed between carbon first and carbon six. That is why we write it as alpha one six because this time bond is formed between carbon first and carbon six. In the main chain, bond was formed between carbon first and carbon four. This was the linear chain. In linear chain, bond was formed between carbon first and carbon four. We called it as alpha one four glycosidic chain, right? But here at the branch point. Bond is formed between carbon first and carbon six by the elimination of water molecule. So that is why we call this linkage here as alpha one four glycosidic, alpha one six sorry, alpha one six glycosidic linkage, right? So now you understand in amylopectin, yes, in amylopectin there are a large number of glucose residues. There may be two thousand to two thousand to two lakh glucose residues. So these glucose residues they are first. In the form of a linear polysaccharide chain. In linear polysaccharide chain, they are linked by alpha one four glycosidic. We see after every twenty to thirty glucose residues, a branch arises. Twenty to thirty glucose residues, a branch arises. Right? In this branch, there are twenty to twenty four glucose residues. There are twenty to twenty four glucose residues. At this branch point, there is alpha one six glycosidic. Now, as we move further ahead. By 20 to 30 glucose residue, another branch arises. Again, at this branch point, there will be alpha 1 6 glycosidic. Right? We move add, another branch will arise. We go add, another branch arises. We go add, another branch arises. So, in this way, this amylopectin, it becomes a branching molecule. It becomes a branching molecule. Right? So, it is not, it is not unbranched. It is branched. And this branching, it occurs after every 20 to 30 glucose residues, right? So this is the structure of amylo, amylo pectin. Now you know starch is formed of these two components, amylose and amylo pectin. What is their ratio in the starch molecule? A starch molecule, it has about 30 percent amylose, and it has got 70 percent. 
amylopectin in it. So which one is larger? Acetaric molecule, acetaric grain. It has got 13% amylose and 70% amylopectin, right? You know, this amylose, it is not soluble. It is not soluble in cold water. Amylose is not soluble in cold water, right? And it is resistant to digestion. It is resistant to digestion. It is not easily digested. Amylose, it is not soluble in cold water and it is resistant to digestion. Why it is not soluble in cold water and why it is not easily digested? Amylopectin is easily soluble in water. If we cut potatoes, we drop those cut potato chips in clear water. As we drop these cut potato chips in clear water, we immediately see that water becomes murky. That water becomes murky. Why that water becomes murky? You just try it at home today. You cut fresh potato, then immerse those fresh potato chips into water. As you will put potato chips into water, the water becomes murky. Why that water becomes murky? Which one of these two components dissolves in that water? Just make a guess. Which one of these two components will dissolve in that water? It is amylopectin because it is branched. It is because it is branched. It is branches easily get dissolved in water, right? It is highly branched, so it's and glucose units they easily get dissolved in water, and water turns murky. Well, as amylose, it is in the form of unbranched chain, and it is helical chain. Those unbranched helical chains they are put close together, right? So water cannot access them directly. So they are inaccessible to water or they are inaccessible to digestive enzymes. So that is the reason why amylose does not immediately dissolve in water or it remains inaccessible, inaccessible to digestive enzymes, right? So amylo, amylopectin being highly branched, it is branched, get, branches get easily dissolved in water and it is water soluble, while as amylose which is not having any branching, which is unbranched, and those unbranched helical chains, they are closely packed together. So it is glucose unitors, they are not accessible easily to water. So it remains insoluble and it remains resistant to digestion. Well, as amylopectin can be easily dissolved in water and it is easily digested. So acetaric molecule is formed of 30% amylose and 70% amylopectin. So, so this is how a starch molecule is formed, right? Now where do we find starches? Starches are stored carbohydrates of plants, right? So they are, they are synthesized by plants. And these carbohydrates of plants, they are stored in the form of starch. So our starch rich food substances, they include wheat, rice, potato, bananas, right? Fruits. They all contain starch, right? So that is all about starch. Now, inshallah, tomorrow we will discuss, tomorrow on the next, next lecture, we will discuss the animal starch, Galaikuji. Our time is running out. So it is session for today. Thank you for being with me. And please don't make noise. Ask your family members to not create this noise. It disturbs the class. Okay, thank you.